Not recording. <laughs> you got to hit record. <laughs> yeah. I was ready to record, but oh, okay, not recording. I see. Now I'm recording. You're recording now? Yes. You're sure you're recording now? I'm positive. It's another after party on how to drink. Take one. You ever think about um, old cocktail books, Meredith? <laughs> that's, I mean, all the time. Yeah, that's all I think about. Anyway, I got this book. It's a reprint of some ancient stuff called The Modern Bartender's Guide, and it's got a lot of drinks in it that I've never had. Didn't, and I, you, didn't you use that book to, to make some syrup once? Yeah, we did. We tore a page out of it and drank it. Uh, there's the page we tore out, um, which, by the way, was an advertisement for Payne's Business Letter Writer. That might be a future episode, actually. And a series of recitations and readings from Burdett's. Um, anyway, there's a lot of cocktails in here that I've never had, and I thought it might be fun to just, like, try some at random. Uh, and by random, I mean I, the ones I marked were the ones that I've never had, so I've marked them. Uh, During the pandemic, didn't you do a whole thing with cocktails you've never had? I, I did this a little bit on Patreon. Oh, cool. I tried it on Patreon, yeah. And then Bring it to the after party. I love this idea. I'm really bad at staying on top of shit, so it didn't... <laughs> It didn't continue. Look, you were alone in a basement, shooting by yourself, and we were all dealing. In the basement. We were all dealing with some shit. So I've never had this drink. It's called a fancy brandy cocktail number one, and unfortunately, I got to drink it alone because you can't really help me on this. We're trying to get pregnant, so if you see me drinking sometimes on the show, it is not during the times Which that trying. I'm trying. Yeah. If you do see me drink, it's either an old recording or I'm currently in a window where I can. In the very straightest of ways I can possibly express to you, I am trying to not get pregnant. And I'm going <laughs> to go see a doctor are. about that in about two weeks, and it makes me very nervous. I don't want to do it. We both might be having surgery at the same time. Yeah, I'm nervous about it. I don't want to yeah. do it. I'm not nervous about the surgery. I'm really freaked out about it. He wants to put me on um, Twilight. He wants to like, knock me out Oh, a I, bit. to do the egg extraction, if we do IVF, yeah. I have to go under. Does it spook you? I did it for my wisdom teeth. Yeah. I swear that I heard everything going on. I couldn't have, but like when I woke up, my brain was like, oh, I heard things. And then, no, but everything was fine. I just started sobbing when I woke up. I guess okay. a lot of people either laugh hysterically or yeah. sob when they wake up. Yeah, I don't know. If I, I, I don't know. I might ask him this dude on the Novocaine. Yeah. I'm a little freaked out about the whole anesthesia thing and interrupting my flow of consciousness. It freaks me out. A lot of people, I bring this up, they're like, don't you go to sleep at night? And I was like, do you lose all sense of awareness when you go to sleep? Like, do you do you just like edit, cut to morning? Cause like, I don't, I-, I Oh like, no, yeah, I have lots of dreams and stuff. I dream, yeah. I'm aware of what's going on in my house on some level. If you unlock my front door, I'm gonna get up. Yeah. I will know, you know, like, that's weird. I don't know, I, I don't think that that's the same thing. The week, the week I got my wisdom teeth out, my friend's mom had just passed away and I was at her dad's dental practice. So that's partially why I cried. And then I decided it was a great idea to come out to my mom that night. <laughs> so hot. It was so hot. It was a busy week. How'd that go? Your mom was all about it? She is, my mom is wonderful. Okay. <laughs> but it took a little bit of time, as it does with a lot of parents sure. who were born in the 1950s. So we're going to make fancy brandy cocktail number one. Not to cut you off, but I got to crack this yeah, ice. Yeah, let's do it. Fill my glass with ice. All right, that's the steps. Step it up. Icy dicey do. But now my mom is our biggest champion. Oh, that's wonderful. All right, two or three dashes of gum, but we're gonna use simple. These old recipes always call for dashes, which is a tricky one. Um, Cause like, I don't have a dasher and I couldn't dash it through a dasher anyway. So I'm gonna read that as, I don't know what they meant by a dash. I'm gonna do it like three kind of short bar spoons like that. I'm not really sure. It's a tricky one. It's a tough one to figure out. One or two dashes of curacao. Did I miss you saying the name of this drink? Yeah, three times I've said it. It's the fancy brandy <laughs> cocktail number one. Uh, we did just have a guest on. I don't know when this is gonna come out, but we just shot a thing with a very special guest, which will come out probably later, later. Um, and that was fun. We did it by video chat. I think we can do more of that. I think the technology is proven now. I think video chat is here to stay. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, it's not like that. It's not like awful. the Dick Tracy watch phones, yeah, but we'll not, get there. Not like that television trying to replace radio, <laughs> which is just a flash in the pan. It um, was fun. I say more guests. I'm here for it. It's just a lot to coordinate. I know. Um, a two dashes of curacao. Again, we're just going to use the same notion that it's like 
a piece of a bar spoon. Yeah, can you imagine? Like, I must put all of all of my liqueurs into Dasher bottles before I start to make this drink. I really, I don't, well, first off, they didn't. And secondly, I don't think that Dash meant the same thing. And we don't even know, like, well, I guess we do know, some people know, but like, is this Dasher top, like, you know what I mean? Like, there's a lot of stuff linguistically where like, oh, I mean a Dash, like from a Dasher. Mm -hmm. And like at the exact same time, they might have meant, I mean a Dash, like, Whatever you feel like pouring, right? You got to know the difference, like you know. To, almost like to taste now. Yeah, exactly. But like they would have said them at the same time, back to back, and you just got to figure it out. This book is crazy. It's filled with all kinds of misprints and stuff. Like it lists ingredients twice. It uses archaic measurements. Sometimes it uses different sets of archaic measurements in one recipe. There's a recipe in here for something called tomato wine <laughs> that I have long considered making. Oh, it yeah. says it's much thought of in some places, and we assume that that means prisons. <laughs> um, two dashes of Angostura bitters. Sounds like a good after party at some point. Yeah, it's on the list. And a wine glass of brandy. Um, I'm gonna go with two ounces for my wine glass. I think there is some argument that a wine glass might be as many as four ounces, but I don't think it, um, that doesn't make much sense to me in this particular recipe. And for brandy, oh shit, we spilt. For brandy, we're gonna use Pierre Ferrand Cognac. Well, you've turned me on to Colombo and I watched the wine episode recently and their wine glasses were rather small in yeah. that episode, I yeah, noticed. that's true. They weren't yeah, the five that's ounce That's the one where they, they like, I would never let anyone else pour my yes. port because of the sediments. Yeah. <laughs> I love the way he gets them on that too. That's a really good one. Oh with yeah, like the bad oh that's port. right, yeah. Oh yeah, because he takes it from his cellar. It's a very fun, I never, I haven't yet, I've only watched three episodes, but I've not yet been able to be like, how is he gonna catch him? Mrs. How to Drink is a fan of something called the Cozy Mystery. You fan mm. of those? Do you know what a cozy mystery is? Or like, um, it's like a murder, only murders in the building? Well, borderline. A cozy mystery is like a specific genre of mystery books that are, you know, basically mass produced. Like the um, boxcar children? No, they would be like a cupcake called Desire. And it's like a whole, like would be book 17 of 35. And it's about this girl who moves back home to deal with her father's funeral in book one, but then instead decides to stay there, sell her assets, and open a cupcake shop where she finds out that she has magic batter that lets her tell the truth. So lifetime and every single week, there's a murder that she has to solve while flirting with a fella of the week. Like, it's <laughs> that's basically the cozy mystery. Yeah, lifetime movies. Yeah. The other equivalent would be like, I think Murder, She Wrote, obviously. Sure, okay. This requirement, although it's a different kind of cozy. Never saw what much Murder, She Wrote. That's... You know, I know RuPaul is a huge fan of Murder, She Wrote. I have not spent much time with Murder, She Wrote. My grandmother loved Murder, She Wrote. She also loved Magnum. I gravitated towards Magnum and Columba. Okay, here we go. So it says just strain that sucker away. Beautiful. Sure. Yeah, it's like a nice cognac -y cocktail. I don't know what it's gonna taste like. It might just be pretty, um, there might not be a lot going on here. Then we gotta do a lemon twist. Nice. Good twist. May as well give the people what they're paying for here, which apparently is that. I guess I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you're paying for. Hey, look at that. Yeah, money, please. <laughs> money, please. All right. Fanciest cocktail show on YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> God. <laughs> uh, what is this called? This is a fancy brandy number one. Okay, here we go. Some toodles. <laughs> Where are you going? I like that. Ooh, that's weird. That's a surprising note. There's almost like a... There's a newt, note, newt. There's a newt there that reminds me of Fruit Loops. There's a note there that reminds me of Fruit Loops, which is so funny. Everything else does not. Um, it, it's a nice, light, cognac-y cocktail. Actually, this is really good. This is a great drink. I encourage you to make this drink. Not too dry or too sweet. Um, right on the nose. The lemon is really key here. That lemon twist adds a lot to this drink. And the way it mingles with the flavors at one brief moment in its evolution does kind of register like, like Fruit Loops, like a breakfast cereal kind of thing. I don't know. Um, it's just like the way it's all coming together in this one. I mean, obviously we were working with dashes of all these ingredients, so they're all gonna be a little bit different unless we can really codify what a historic dash meant. 
Um, and it's tricky with simple or gum syrup because you know they weren't using dasher tops because their simple syrups were all two to one. If you look at these old books and they're thick, gum syrup is thicker. Um, so you can't get that through a little, little, whatever you want to call that. Um, you're not going to get a good answer on that. I will once we have the AI bing. That's a good drink. I was asking AI the other day, I was asking chat GPT, when should I plan a trip to Disney World to avoid crowds the most? It said the first week in December. Wrong. I agree with that. I don't think that's correct. I think historically that was a good time, but I think that old chat GPT's at, uh, information is a little out of date there. Well, let's move on to the next one. I don't know. Like, they're just going to rapidly do doo doo doo. I want to do this one. If we do this again, I want to try this East India cocktail, but I don't have any raspberry syrup on the moment. Uh, on the moment. At the moment. Anyway, we did just film an episode. And so, therefore, I am a little intipulated. Let's try this vermouth cocktail, number two. Uh, really simple. Uh, bar glass fill with ice, gum syrup, angle bitters, maraschino, vermouth, stir and strain. While the term dash is often used as a unit of measurement, it's actually quite imprecise. That's what I, uh, yeah. A typical what... dash of bitters is generally considered to be about an eighth of a teaspoon or less than that. In other words, it's just a small amount. <laughs> yeah, it's like, that's right. And so like there is like, if you ask like some old timey bartenders, I, like, that's, I have, what are they, what's a dash? A dash is a dash. Yeah. What's a splash? A splash is a splash. You know, I'm not gonna tell you. Yeah, you know, what it what it means something to me different than what it means to you. Right. If you like my bartending, come to my bar. If you like my dashes and splashes. The the recipes of those times are sort of arcane to some degree. They are a little bit open to interpretation. You know what that means in my bar and in my house might be different right. than what it means in your bar and in your house. It's the after party, anything goes. Anything goes. Anything goes. Pum, pum, da, 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 da. I saw. Um, a revival of Anything Goes. This is how to drink and I saw that. It was done by the Roundabout Theater Company. Uh-huh. It's a great show, man. It's a good one. I like a big jazz music. It's Cole Porter, yeah? Oh, hell yeah. I like Cole Porter. Yeah, that's, yes. He's Have you ever guy. seen Tank Girl? Tank Girl? You never saw Tank Girl? No. Well, as a gay, you might like it. <laughs> it's a pretty gay movie. Oh, yeah. It, I mean, it is, yeah. There's a scene that comes up with Cole Porter comes up. It's Put based, it on the list. Yeah, it's based on a comic book. There we go. Yeah, we have plenty of ice. All right, what are we making here? All these drinks start by putting your ice in first. Vermouth. Uh, okay, four to five dashes of gum syrup. So I mean, like that's that's a fair amount. If the last time was only like two or three. We even want more. A couple dashes of Angostura bitters. You know, by the way, how you said that your Angostura always spills when you go to pick uh -huh. it up. Uh huh. It's because you go slow. What you got to do is oh, I've done it every way. Just you know, swing it straight over, so that the centripetal force. You use the other. Use the use their bottle. I don't have one with a bluesy on top of yeah. it, but it works. The big bottle. Yeah. You got to use a small Flip bottle. It's just too much to manage. All right. Um, two dashes of maraschino. Yeah, I really like that music. It's a good one. It's a great song. These musicals always they wrap up quite nicely. I couldn't tell you much about the plot. I mean, it just felt like any other pre-code movie I'd seen, to be honest. And then at the end, it all like it all wraps up, and and the old two old people that have been sort of meandering around the whole show have found each other, and now they're in love. <laughs> so I have a couple of thoughts about vermouth. Um, I think what I really want here is a blanc vermouth that says French vermouth, um, or it seems to imply French vermouth because of the previous recipe. Here it just says vermouth. Um, and maybe it could be whatever vermouth you want. I have a bottle of Dolangerai. I also have this um, Baldoria Bianco, and I'm wondering if this is more of a Blanc vermouth. Blanc is a white vermouth that's lightly sweetened as opposed to a dry vermouth, which is unsweetened, or nearly unsweetened. That'll be fine. I think that's the one to use. Good, because if, once you open that, you gotta find room for it in the fridge. Oh, that's a nice, that, I like that actually quite a bit. That's a very cool, interesting bottle. Uh, two ounces of this, please. Curiata gave us the bottle. Yeah, this is from Curiata. They asked me to try it out. All right, stir the hell out of this. Another lemon peel on top of this. It's nice to get some different bottles to try from. <laughs> it is, it's true. It, is, it is nice, yeah. yeah. Outside um, of what we can get from the local stores. <laughs> Da -dum, da -dum, da -dum, da -dum, da -dum. 
Anything goes. That's a great song to introduce to people who might think that like music today is so saucy and filthy. Boy, back in the old day, people had morals. I mean, there's an exact song about, you know, hanging out at nudist parties and stuff and like getting wild, yeah. you know, and, and complaining about the exact same thing, you know. In olden days, a glimpse of stocking was something I don't know the you words. You know more of the lyrics than I do. Oh, I'd love that song. Yeah, I never watched the movie they made about him a couple years. Well, if my West, not a you like. Years, if but. me undressed, you like. Well, nobody will oppose. Oh, I suppose. <laughs> yeah, it's a great song. I like Cole Porter. This one's a very similar color to the other one. Yeah, you're gonna catch that sometimes. Anything else? Oh, uh, it's a body song. Oh no! <laughs> you got forget it. In there. Forget it. <laughs> we got enough for the taste. Yeah, I'm trying to get fancy with this tiny little piece of lemon. It's pointless. All right, here we go. This is uh, vermouth number two. A lot of lemon. Woo! Oh my God, that's good. Wow. <laughs> Lower proof cocktail for sure. I mean, that's delicious. That particular vermouth is doing a lot of lifting there. The, it has like a, a piney note to it that in this particular setup is super good. Oh my God. The lemon with like this piney note, and I don't mean piney like you might think of a gin, but like the smell of a beautiful old growth pine forest on the west coast. Where the trees are a lot different. They are. They're really special trees out there. We don't have them over here on the east coast. Um, we, just, we don't grow them. Sugar pines and, and you know, <clears throat> redwoods and stuff like that and certain kinds of cedars. Um, maple cedar? I don't know what they call it, but it's a cedar. Um, anyway, it, this is unbelievably good. This is very, very good. I really like this drink. It's a shame that Meredith can't drink. My mom drank. So, her doctor, I mean, so it was the 80s. It and, was the 80s. Um, yeah. She wasn't allowed to smoke. She had to give that up, I think. I don't even know. Um, and her doctor was like, You seem like really stressed. Why don't you have a glass of red wine every night? Yeah. Every night. Goodness. Here, those tapping feet on the avenue. I'm taking you to 42nd Street. When's the last time you saw that show? Uh, the, the film, uh, not in a minute. Yeah. Um, it's, it's an okay pre-code. I like uh, Gold Diggers of 33 a little better. Um, 42nd Street, it's like confusing, to be honest. Have you ever seen it on stage though? I think once. Yeah. I think I did. Lots of tap dancing. Yeah. So. Yeah, I like that. They closed the second act, or the first act. I gotta make some act. seltzer. By I'm listening. throwing coins into like a circular thing and tapping in them. Mm -hmm. oh, I love that. I, did I love that. tap dancing. But I love chess. But I don't think it was the one with the coins because it was a long time. Maybe ago. they don't always do that. But I no. But I mean, it was probably a different a production, production of it. I saw it in like the late nineties. <laughs> I always wanted to be a tap dancer. You still time. I know. Not right now, I have a broken foot, but I always wanted to learn how to tap dance. Um, I need a shaker. All right, so in my book, it says that I need to have, um, this is, we're make, by the way, we're making a morning glory fizz. I, I don't know that it matters that I do this, but it does say it wants my ice in, in there first. And for that purpose, I'm gonna, I'll use my big cup. Um, I was live streaming last night on YouTube and Twitch at the same time, which I'm not supposed to do. It's against the terms of service of Twitch, but I, I don't thought they changed those terms because you're not supposed to simul stream. I don't think, but who gives oh, a fuck, I see. you know, whatever. Um, <laughs> and we were talking about somebody who was like, Oh, look at that optimistic nihilism. That's what I am. I'm an optimistic nihilist. I didn't know that term. I thought it was literally just the actual definition of nihilism was kind of an optimistic philosophy. Sure. If you read Nietzsche, it's not. It doesn't mean like nothing means anything, so I may as well die. It means nothing means anything. This is great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I can just do what I want. <laughs> All right, we want three or four dashes of absinthe. I'm going to use my spritzer, and I'm going to assume each spritz is a dash. Three dashes of lime juice. Three dashes of lime juice. Mm. 
What's a dash of lime juice? Probably the same thing we've been doing for dashes. Like a also. squeeze? Yeah, well, a squeeze. Three dashes, a healthy squeeze. I, I'm gonna use it like three soft bar spoons. That seems very little. Give it one more. Okay. We like the lime. Oh, also lemon juice. Five dashes of lemon juice. Morning Glory Fizz has got a lot going on. Got to get you a new cutting board. Like yeah, the Fruit probably. Ninja thing is fine, but you should also be able to cut when you need to. I need an egg white. No, oh, we should have dry shook this. All right, whatever. And oh, a wine shoot. glass of scotch. But it told you to put the ice in first. We got no? that monkey shoulder. I know, you're right. So you're absolutely right. Is, it, is the glass? Shoulder? Monkey shoulder is. That's the one to use for this. I don't think we, do we still have? You said it was on set. No, no, I said you had the monkey, it, 70, the gin, not the not Oh, scotch. monkey, whatever. But yeah, do yeah, we yeah. have mon monkey shoulder? Um, what do we have for scotch? You see any scotches? Yeah, I've got the glass, the, uh, That's the glass compass go. box. You got the artist blend? It's the same company. I mean, I have a bottle of it. I just don't know if you're gonna be able to find it. Uh, where did the scotches go? Because I don't think an Isla makes sense here. I don't think that's what it's calling for. That's Irish whiskey. Here we got Artist Blend. Yeah, that's the one. There we go. That's the one to use if All we right. don't. Yep. Yeah, oh, I, I can see you got juggling. too many bottles. Too many bottles in your hands. All juggling. She's got juggling the bottles. All right, here they come. Thank you very much. Woo, woo! Sounds like a train. <laughs> I think that should be a rule. If you're gonna shake a cocktail, you gotta make it sound like a train. <laughs> Uh, strain it into my glass and then fill with seltzer. We're gonna use this. I wonder glass. how this is gonna go with the egg being right in there with the ice. Yeah, it's pretty good. I mean, it, it's uh, that was a good shake. The train shake is the preferred method. Now I'm gonna blast a musical in the car on the way home. Which one? Actually, since we talked about it recently, I haven't listened to Zombie Prom in a really long time. Cold Porter, Forty Second Street, Zombie Prom. <laughs> I'm gonna listen to Zombie Prom. That was a, it was a little pivot, you know. That's what I feel like singing, so that's what I'm gonna do. Fair enough. I was, I music was playing on the way here, and I just let it go instead of turning on a podcast. And I was like, I was a much happier person when I used to listen to music in the car instead of radio. I'm gonna go back to that for a little while. I was true. singing. I was smiling. I was just like, this is a healthier place for me to be. There's nothing worse than thinking too much. <laughs> too many people are thinking too yeah, much. Yeah, or not even thinking, letting other people think for you while you're in the car. This is the most random thought off of that. But uh, there was a show that was out for like a year, probably the worst reality game show concept of all time. You were asked hard questions and you, is it going to happen? No, we're no. not going to go. Without heavy cream, you're not going to Oh, that. I see. Okay. The further you could tell the truth, the more money you made. But it was like in front of your family members. So you, you, asked, the... you were asked uh, all these like really difficult questions with a lie detector. And then you got to explain your answer. But this woman was there and her mother was there. And the question was, do you think you're a better parent than your mother? And she said, of course I do. Very easily. Yeah. And her reason was, the goal of every parent should be to leave their child a better parent than they were and right. continue to pass that down. Yeah, and I'm sure she thought she was a better mom than her mom. That's exactly right. Yeah, it's and not so it's like, I hope my kids are better moms than I am, and yeah. then that's that's what we should be striving. I saw a TikTok the other day. It was something about the fact that, like, if when your kids grow up, you're the most important person in their life still, you have fucked up. Yeah. And I was like, oh, no. That's true, and I don't like it. <laughs> That's not good. Oh, no. Uh, all right, this is the morning glory fizz. We'll see how it is. I'm not a fan of that. It's like weirdly salty. The absinthe mm -hmm. didn't screw it up. I could see somebody liking it. It's not like an objectively bad cocktail. It's borderline. I think that, frankly, I don't know what they meant by four dashes of lime, five dashes of lemon. I think it needs more lemon and lime, without a doubt. Like, it needs to have quite a bit more of it. Um, but it is drinkable. It just comes across as very weirdly salty. Somebody might like it. Also, my specs might be off. Um, 
I, I still like this. This vermouth number two came out fantastic, but I, I that's gonna be so dependent on the vermouth you use. It's like a game. We've made three. Who's the winner? Definitely. Oh my god, what is that flavor? I mean, I'm obsessed with it. It is the smell of some place in Epcot, and I maybe Norway or something. It's so weirdly specific, but like, <laughs> I am obsessed with the way this tastes. What do you think? I think I'm jealous. Oh, of my ability to drink these? Yeah, uh, well, the vermouth number two, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start, here's what we're gonna do. While we oh. do these over the next year, hopefully, we'll see. I'm gonna start writing down the ones that I really wanna try, and then we're gonna have an after party where I'm making maybe the drinks that I didn't get to drink. So I'm writing down vermouth number two. This could be a lot better, but that's not, that's not it. Mmm. Oh, shit, man. I fucking hate that drink. Wow. It's, it's rare that I hate an honest cocktail that much. One time a long time ago, we did like a, um, a Ward 8 on the channel. Oh, man, I did not like that drink. People bring that up sometimes as like, don't you remember that was the worst drink you ever had? And I'm like, I didn't remember, but you're right. That's <laughs> at ranks. Because it's like, oh, it's just like a classic cocktail. It's just basic, but like... Something about it does not, it's bad. Like, I'll, look, I'm just gonna, for funsies, I'm just, like, obviously this is gonna break the drink. I'm just gonna squeeze more lemon and lime in here and see if that makes it any better, just flavor-wise. There we go. Let's get is that. it under-sweetened, so it's salty? Is that because I, I it's don't, also? Maybe it is, but I think it's honestly under-tarted. I met a tart once. <laughs> she was under tarted. She wasn't tarted out enough for me. I wanted my tarts to be quite tarted out indeed. <sighs> I mean, that brightens it for sure, just ratio wise. And like, you know, yeah, sure. If we add simple to it, like another dump, another galump of simple and stir that in. <laughs> yeah, way better. Um, still plenty of absinthe in there to be absinthe as it intended to be. To remind me, next time we do an after party, I've got an almost finished bottle of bourbon. We could start our forever bottle, maybe. What kind of bourbon? It's four roses that we're almost done with. Four roses, and um, we got to put some uh, some some pappy in it since we have that sitting around. <laughs> Yeah. Just we're not close it. to the end of it, but just, just start to kick it off. Yeah, no, 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 we'll you don't off. need to be the end. I mean, All you right. can just throw in, you can start it with whatever you want. We'll do We'll do an after party where we start it off and then we'll yeah. bring it back for a while. We'll bring the, we'll do make the Infinity bottle. Well. We'll just put it on the show. We'll keep it up here. That sounds great. We'll have it forever. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Been on this show for a long time. Deep top, doodly beep bop, bow. See you guys next time on How to Drink.